You are currently listening to me going through this machine right here. Uh, this isn't the actual function of it. Um, it is a tape loop. Uh, it's something that was based on an image that Heimbach showed me just before our shows last week. Uh, I tried to finish this machine uh, to use for Bordstein Canter when we sing that because it's pitched down. Bordstein Canter looking up Stars above, stars above. but I didn't get it made in time. In fact, I didn't even start it. This has been a week long project and I really want to show you what the fudge it is. So this is based on a 1960s machine called the Temperfon and uh, Heimbach showed me an image of it and that's all I know of it. After I saw that image, I didn't do any reading. Uh, I probably should have. And then, uh, yeah, I kind of just built this, which is basically it. The idea is, is it's a real time pitch shifter that is made from a tape loop. You'll see there is a tape loop rotating around this machine. Uh, it's got a cap stand that's holding it nice and tight. And then over here, this is the magic bit. The audio gets recorded from this record head onto the tape loop. The idea is if you rotate the rotating tape head with the tape loop, the audio can go down in pitch. Have a listen. I am going down in pitch in real time. I'm sounding like a monster. But the crazy thing is, if you move it the other way, you can go up in pitch. If you go backwards, which means that it actually runs quicker than the tape in general, uh, you end up going up in pitch and you sound like a chip. That's crazy, isn't it? So you can go anywhere from a monster all the way up to a chip or anything in the tree. I reckon I could get this running even quicker so you can go even slower or even quicker. But first, before that, let's have a look at how it was done. I started when Heimbach told me about it at the pub when we were talking about this machine. I got out on shape and started designing the tape head. I'm just designing this thing. It's two days before the show. Might not happen, but I'm, I'm going to blow it try. <laughs> eight, eight millimeters, so I'm going to circumference of. 22 plus 8 is 30, plus 2, 32, let's do that. Oh, oh it's looking a bit, looking a bit weird. So yeah, after all of the band practice and the gigs and stuff, it wasn't actually possible for me to finish this. So this is after I got back. I started by 3D printing that design and then also hot gluing around this cog to make a little bit of a rubbery arm for the tape to actually feed through the mechanism. I used this slip ring. What a slip ring does is it means that you can have electrical connections as something spins. If you didn't have that, then the wires would just get taffled up and snap. Uh, so search up slip ring if you want some of these. It's a, They're amazing amazing machines and probably the world wouldn't function without them uh, so uh, I also cut a hole in there for the stepper motor to sit in so we drill a hole and put the uh, tape drum mechanism in there with the slip ring inside of it uh, the the actual stepper motor needed to be over there and be belt driven because yeah it wouldn't work underneath the slip ring or it'll all get taffled up again but uh, after that I realized I, I had too many beers and I designed it all wrong so we got to design it again but in the meantime let's put a couple of Arduinos on this strip board uh, we're going to use these to control the stepper motors you might be like sam why didn't you just use one arduino to control both stepper motors it's quicker for me to solder two circuits to control two stepper motors than to code uh, so yeah we've all got our strengths and uh, yeah our weaknesses let's say so we bought it that all together and after a while it all started working i coded it and then as you can see if you turn it all the way that way it will spin that way if you turn it all the way that one it will spin that way the example code is is available on the website and I used uh, this uh, this schematic right here. Uh, I, I redesigned the tape head as well so it would actually fit. Uh, this definitely wasn't at the pub luckily so it actually it actually works. Uh, I've wired all of the tape heads in parallel so they're literally acting as the same tape head uh, and I, I'm quite pleased with that. It looks a bit rough but it is functional and that's that's all that matters. And as you can see it's spinning freely and there's still electrical connections. The belt needs tightening up so you push it back and add tension to it and yeah, this 
This is the first time I actually span around. I was elated because it actually seemed like it was going to work. This is a bearing with loads of washers, so it feeds the tape and makes that angle. It's very important to have a 90 degree angle so the tape heads don't actually cross over each other, which would mean that the tape heads are reading from two separate bits of tape at the same time. If it's 90 degree angle, then but you'll only ever have one tape head actually reading the tape at any one time, so the effect works. This is me soldering the circuit that would read the tape heads. It basically amplifies the audio from the tape and also filters it a bit. It's by Music Thing Modular. It's the Magneto font. I've used it a few times. Link below. This is the audio input and output jacks. After that, I've 3D printed these tape guides. What they do is they guide the tape around the mechanism because you don't want the tape getting lost. If it just flies off and flicks in your eye, then you might lose your eye. So you've got to be careful. So these tape guides make sure that the tape is just going to stay where it's supposed to go. So uh, I've just kind of done this by eye as well. So here's me with a bit of string, making sure it sort of fits. And whilst I was making this very dodgy wooden box, I jumped on Onshape again to design a tensioner assembly. Uh, what this is, is it's going to add tension to the tape. So if I make the tape loop a little bit loose, it kind of takes up the slack. It's like the suspension for the tape. Uh, this, I'm quite pleased with how that worked out. There's a couple of bearings in there to make sure it stays solid. And then that bolts right here, uh, and that kind of adds tension to the tape. Yeah, I've said tension to the tape, but lovely jubbly. This is the tape record head. This is a Brennell tape head. You'll eagle eyes amongst you will notice that this is a different tape head to what I used in the actual final thing, but I, I modified it afterwards. I built this whole machine for one eighth inch tape, which is direct from a cassette tape. And I realized that right here that it was a very bad idea because this tape is crap. I needed to use a pinch wheel uh, or it wouldn't actually move. So I moved the tensioner over and put a pinch wheel on it instead. So it act like a pinch wheel. And then it actually, have, uh, after you put the spring in it, it actually worked really well. Look at that, it's smooth, so smooth. And this is the first time it ever worked. So speed up the tape. Uh, I realized I didn't put an erase head on it. So I got a fridge magnet, plonked it there. Right, let's see if it actually does anything. Ooh. Right, that's the tape speed. But that is the actual tape head. It's working. Right, let's see how Bordstein counter would have sounded at the gig. This is so cool. This is so little What's so this version for this video is done. It's not perfect. In fact, I've got a few modifications I'm going to be doing to it. Uh, I shouldn't have started by using tape cassette heads. Uh, they're one eighth inch tape and the tape that I used uh, was literally from a tape cassette. It was a very bad idea. I should have gone for quarter inch tape, which is as twice as wide as this and it's used for reel to reels. Uh, the tape is much more durable, easier to use, easier to make loops from and uh, when you put tension on it, it doesn't stretch. This stuff has been a nightmare because I can't put a tension wheel on here. You saw I had a tension wheel here because it literally stretches the tape. So you can't push it onto this hard enough to get a real good response. Also, I didn't finish the circuitry for the tape record head. I've ended up using uh, the uh, circuitry in the back of this copycat. It turns out you need to add an AC carrier signal to it, an AC bias, which makes it record onto the ferrous material much nicer and you get a much higher definition. Um, it sounds not great at the minute. In Mark II, I'm gonna have different tape heads, much better circuitry in here and quarter inch tape uh, to make this all work. I also found it worked really well putting drums through it. It sounds really quite nice, even in its lo-fi kind of way. I'm not going to be able 
By the way, there is a bunch more recorded of that kind of stuff over on Patreon. You can download it, use it as samples and stuff, and also see the build logs on this. But I may as well finish this video talking through this machine itself. I'm going to get another gear that's about this size and put it on this one right here so things run even quicker, so we can go even higher and hit. And even lower and hit. It's amazing, and I am so happy I've got this far. I just need to spend a couple more weeks on it, and it's going to be awesome. So keep on following along. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to support this project and see more stuff, then go and check it out over on Patreon. The support really, really helps with making these kind of projects. Anyway, I'm looking on my local computer. That is the temper bond. Have a lovely time. And remember, don't be scared. It's a new Stars above. Stecken hier in